hot topic right now. And uh, after Brexit, how do you think uh, the solution of uh, the Indian public has changed? It's more you know, I, I have just been talking to a few people around and uh, I think what Brexit has done is make people more confident of what's going to happen to them. And any time you think of buying any asset, you have to be very sure of your own position and before you put in, put down money because it's a huge investment. Um, this way or that way, even though I know uh, London's population was not for it, but it's behind us now. And, uh, in some ways, I feel the, the people who are the immigrants in the sense that who've been in London for very long, the Indians, uh, a lot of the jobs were getting replaced by a whole lot of Europeans. And I actually used to feel it every time I used to work, uh, particularly in the um, hospitality industry. So I think uh, that confidence of now keeping your job uh, is, going to continue, is going to be there. So Indians who were earlier wondering what is going to happen, um, I think now the people with the confidence that they can now uh, you know, go and invest, I think it's going to be good. I literally felt it in talking to some people. Uh, I'm not saying uh, that they were very happy about what happened, but I think they're sure. That is, it always helps uh, in such situations. And do you, but do you think this has affected also the real estate market somewhere? Uh, one of the things that was probably affected uh, NRI's buying India, uh, staying here and buying in India, it was more I think we're talking about the results. And uh, some people were coming here, getting a job, uh, working for some time, and very soon they would think of investing back home. Uh, very often they wanted to go back. Um, I think once that, uh, you know, visas were after you finished your uh, courses, you were not getting you know, you know, jobs. I think all that also reduced uh, some of the interest. Uh, even uh, visas for companies that come in and uh, work here, uh, even those tighten to some extent. And uh, so all those things have made more of a difference. I, I think eventually it is really the economy, it is uh, uh, how Britain is doing and that is very simple. You must remember that when you buy a house in India, you don't need it. You know, it's an investment. Uh, so it is something that you can do two years later. You can not do it at all because it's not going to make much difference. A lot of people are really buying it for that house in India if we ever go back. And, you know, that can happen anytime. So, um, I think this is going to be really good. In terms of, I would say, numbers, Sophia is also asking um, They have come down. I would say numbers have come down to about half of uh, the business we were doing. A lot of people went back to India. Uh, last two months, we are seeing it uh, come back again. Very honestly, my colleagues here were saying that the interest that we are seeing after Brexit, the cause that we are getting, um, is very hard. And uh, where do you see the Indian real estate industry going? We have reached a, it has reached a level of maturity. What is your view about See, Indian real estate industry, if uh, earlier in the past we had properties literally going up 20% every year, I think that is a thing of the past. But having said that, if you invest in India today, will you get a return in five years time? Definitely. Will you will your property appreciate in ten years time? Absolutely. See, <coughs> India again today is a very young country. As long as people get jobs, people will buy homes. Housing um, in terms of as a percentage of the GDP is very low, it's nine percent. If you look at Britain, you know, you look at uh, the Western countries, it's in the mid, in the 50s and the 60s. So housing shortage continues to be there. Uh, I can't see housing sales. You'll always see some dip, but they go back, coming down for the at least the next five to seven years. So housing as an investment in India is very good. It depends on what you're trying to buy. If you're going to buy the couple of million dollar homes, yes, that. You know, is going to be soon. If you're going to buy homes which are in the middle income category, uh, I think the next seven, eight years are very, very good. And the Indian government's also started to work on the smart cities. Do you think how has that opened up the market for MRIs and DIOs that have shifted from Bombay and Paris to 
So Zoya, that's in clear. Uh, because uh, there is a lot of action happening not in terms of planning. Uh, the government has, in, has announced 100 smart cities, out of which 12 or 13 have already started doing some work. But five or six of them, so the way they're trying to do it is they're going to uh, set up a special purpose vehicle, another company in other words, which is actually going to drive it. And so special, uh, so, so smart cities can be a brand new city, can be a city which is going to redevelop itself. And so between these two, right now, the, the already existing cities are being developed. Um, so as far as that is concerned, I would still see housing and the interest in real estate from an individual point of view will take another couple of years because these companies have been formed. Um, it's still a state government subject. Every state has to take their own decisions how they want to run it. They need to get the land. They need to put the infrastructure in place. It's a lot to do with not just uh, real estate. It's also got to do with you know garbage collection, water, how sewage disposal, how well you know your city is connected in, in, uh, uh, through the internet. How do you make your payments? The payments which should be you know everything should be on uh, digital now. So that is going to take time. But having said that, uh, once these cities come up, I think they'll be very nice to them. And housing can never become rich. Yes. Housing can never be virtual. You need a house. So I think it's all good news. Yeah. Yeah. And the last question would be that uh, obviously one is that buying a home back in India. The other, as you mentioned, is investment. Which, according to you, which are the best cities right now that you should look into investing? Mm -hmm. and so if I were a uh, you know, person here from Indian origin, NRI or whatever, of course my first thing would be uh, to actually buy a house where I have some family. Okay. Keeping that aside, I think the uh, metros continue to be where a lot of people come in for jobs. But at the same time, they're very, very expensive. But in terms of uh, appreciation, I would say the Delhi's, the Bombay's, the Bangalore's, the Chennai's, the Pune's, the Hyderabad's will really be the ones that you'll see it go in, say, the next two to three years. But if you have a five to ten year span, then I would say the state, some of the state capitals, like Jaipur, so even if you look at uh, places like Nagpur, where it's going to be a logistic uh, center, because right in the center of the city is going to be a logistic hub for the country eventually. So in the next 10 years, a lot of these, uh, what you call the second tier cities, will do reasonable, uh, you know, we'll say reasonable capital. But um, otherwise the government is in the